Science. We get experimental science. We're curious, non-judgmental. Uh, the study specter was a way of uh, spay and neutering a cat without having to undergo surgery. So they, they uh, tested, they utilized this um, form of gene therapy that prevented egg release in the cats. And that prevention of egg release made it so that the cats were not getting pregnant. So they, they only tested nine animals total. Three were controls. Six were experimental with two different doses. And it's a viral vector, so a virus that they're injecting. They've removed the genetic information from the virus and added in something that modifies the cat genome. And it pre prevents the release of embryos in the ovary. And they actually cohabitated the cats with males for five, five months, or sorry, five days of the week. Five days of the week and the cats did not get pregnant and so it was just an easy injection that they did they don't know if it's fully permanent kennedy they only research it up to two years and for two years the effect lasted they don't know how much longer it lasts after that but this is like the first study of this kind of how you can have these injections to modify and prevent uh you know overpopulation of kitty cats and like a way of modifying you know the pop a population control that's not invasive safe for the animal they still undergo normal um cycling hormone cycling like that doesn't change uh it's quite cool on that front as well so i'll show you all the the abstract as well i say 80 percent of six 60 million domestic cats in the world are free roaming so there, of course, is the reason for uh, this treatment needing a worthwhile thing. And the alternative for an efficient, safe, cost-effective, permanent contraception alternatives. Here we report the single evidence that intramuscular treatment with a viral vector um, produces long-term contraception in the domestic cat. Treated females are followed for over two years, during which the transgene is turned on and uh, reproductive hormones are monitored. Mating behavior and reproductive success are measured during two mating studies, and we show that turning on this gene does not impair sex steroids or estracycling. So the cat undergoes a normal life, but, instead, but there's no ovulation. So there's no, there's no egg ever released. And it doesn't mean that the eggs won't ever be released. It's also not permanent. It see well they went for two years and they found it it was not reverse but they're not removing the ovaries they're not killing the embryos they're just making it so the embryos are not released into the fallopian tube so even if the cat cats mate um there is no no chance of anything happening um in terms of like a mating success like there's no nothing to be fertilized and uh smikes they did use there was um so it only works in females actually smikes they did do in males they did in uh viral injections of these in males and all it, they just showed it just didn't do anything but then the kittens or cats that were injected with the experimental drug never got pregnant even though they were co-housed with males five days a week for two years straight which is quite cool it might go past two years as well but that's how long they did it in the study and again the cats still undergo through their usual heat cycles they still have normal behaviors they still mate it's just that eggs are not released from the ovaries into the fallopian tubes in the uterus and so nothing's going to get impregnated and that's the idea behind it they did the experimental controls were really well done they did the viral vector only with the virus being empty as their control and then they did two different doses of the drug to figure out how it goes it is a viral vector so it is a virus that you've taken the dna out from you've injected it something into it that's going to be uh what it's the virus is going to deliver into cells and the idea is so like smikes likes to always say why not do crispr which is that gene engineering 
uh, this doesn't go in and doesn't modify your genome. It just adds an extra component in. And all you need to do is to inject the cat in order to be able to do this. So what's cool about that is you don't have to have a surgery done, which, you know, has a lot of potential negative health consequences. There's also a fair bit of money that goes into it. So it would be a correction way of having, um, you know, making sure the animal is taken care of, essentially. And then on top of that, from a financial element as well, it's interesting. And so, it, again, it changes uh, the ho reproductive hormones and how the ovary cycles. And they did a fair bit of experimentation where they they did uh, different concentrations of drug and they compared it against just injecting the virus by itself. But remember, they removed the genetic information that's already in the virus. So the control is injecting one with a blank virus. There's nothing in there. And then one injecting with the virus that you've created in order to stop and slow down uh, oogenesis or the uh, the release of the embryo. So it's a Nature Communications paper, Nerdowino, which means it's relatively short. So Nature Communications Spikes is a good journal. So it's a it is a one it's a level down from Nature, but it's still a pretty high. It's in the it's in the Nature family, um, and so it, it is a good journal. The, one of the issues is that they always shorten the amount of text that you can put in because it's nature communications are meant to be shorter articles. It's still like high impact and well done science. So there's not a lot in the discussion of any hypothesis of the next things that they might consider doing um, beyond just like a, a big summary of all the work that they ended up doing. Single injection was administered in the right caudal thigh muscles of each cat. Oh, no, cats were anesthetized, Nerduino. They were anesthetized, so they put the cats to sleep upon injection. So that's most likely because in the study, you want the highest level of control because if you had anything where the cats, you know, wiggled free, like you said, like a feral cat, and it caused an injury to an animal, or if it, it wasn't the same site of injection each time, right, that would be less than ideal. So this would be... A good way of going about it it makes sense for the study that you make sure to do the um, the treatment as consistently as possible but if you know maybe, maybe that's the follow-up nerd we know like if I inject at a different site does it give the same effect and you would predict given how robust this was I would predict it would and then maybe you can go, uh, go into having that kind of dark gun delivery metric um, but I do agree with Nerduino that university ethic boards probably would not be a fair way of doing it for someone. And then number two, it's probably just a good, um, it's a good practice from a biological perspective not to start off that way. So what I was really excited about this paper, in addition to being a very unique way of uh, pet control, of where the research was done. Part of it was Harvard Medical School, uh, the Gene Therapy Center at the University of Massachusetts, uh, but also the Center for Conservation and Research of Endangered Wildlife at the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden. Number one, it's a zoo. And I love to see this zoo collaboration. Remember, we've talked about the, um, the Frozen Zoo, right? Which is located at the University of, or the zoo, the San Diego Zoo. And they have this really cool team that harvests genetic information from endangered and soon to be extinct animals and keeps it keeps a whole like genetic database of these samples. And so it's just really cool to see the hands on work being done at zoos in conjunction with research institutions. And I think it's just really cool. Plus, I love Cincinnati. It is our favorite place to vacation. Does it sound strange? Yes, it does. Is it true? It is 100 percent true. So they took an existing concept with a drug. That existing drug did the same thing, which was a monthly a monthly preventative treatment for the cat from getting pregnant. The idea is to use gene therapy to make it more permanent versus having to do it monthly. There might be some other behaviors that are changing as a function of these injections. Again, they just didn't really go into it. Like what you see in the paper, and again, we'll post it on the Discord, 
is primarily looking at like the breeding activity, the ovulation rates, depending on the dosage and like how much they got. Um, there are different uh, hormone levels of the indicating, you know, pregnancy and ovulation. Like that's what they're really looking into and not so much on the behavioral changes that you might be interested in for neutering your cats, you know, or other, other animals. There might be ones, but I definitely agree. It would be a big changer for feral cats and community cats. So it could be huge amounts of good could be done. So the sample number is really low. Three cats were controls and then six cats were experimental. But of those six cats, three were at one dose and other three were at a different dose. This is very different from the replicate number that we see in our fruit fly studies where it's like, you know, hundreds of flies. And it's because higher order mammal studies, cats, mice, dogs, you name it, give a much lower replicate number. Inherently spikes. It is a much, much lower replicate number that you have access to. Their p-value is still statistically significant, meaning that the difference that they, they see I am not at liberty to evaluate if they did their appropriate statistical tests or not, um, which is, you know, less than ideal, but that is something always to keep in mind. Is it, is it the appropriate statistical test or is it the, an inappropriate statistical test? I like this a fair bit. Uh, at the end, they're like, you know, these cats have undergone this clinical trial that we were looking for. And, and now they're done. They've undergone this science. They get a beautiful forever home. It's a nice way of doing it. Our, our noodle, supposedly she was a lab cat. Supposedly she was a lab cat. And the way our vet in Georgia told us that, number one, she has a sleep disorder where when she's sleeping, she sometimes starts running in her sleep, not standing up and running, but like wiggling. Um, and like it's because she has like a brain defect and so when they donated her in lab from labs the the vet says um because of her markings she's most likely a lab cat and the reason that she's put in there she's donated by labs who, because they saw there was a defect on there the cat story uh utilizing the, uh the gene therapy as a way to do um spay and neutering without surgical intervention. So a way to regulate the cat population, again, in a positive way so the cats are not getting pregnant, which is a cool study between Harvard Medical School and the Cincinnati Zoo. I hope you all very much enjoyed them. I know I did.